are going to be rebuilding an engine today. So I've had this block back for two weeks, believe it or not. And the reason why I haven't put it back together is because there was a crack in the block. And I fixed that in the last video. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't already seen it. So now what I'm getting at is there are zero excuses with getting this bottom end back together. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be installing the crankshaft, the pistons and the rods, checking the clearances for the bearings, the piston ring end gap, all the other things that go along with building a bottom end and getting this thing buttoned up today. Once I get the cylinder head back, we will rebuild the rest of the motor. But for this video, we're just gonna be putting together the bottom end. Let's get to it. Before I can put the bottom end together, I have to get this thing totally spotless clean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe down the whole engine with acetone in all of the bearing surfaces, any mating surfaces to get this thing absolutely clean. And then we're going to use an air compressor to blow out all the oil passages and orifices as well. I will also be chasing all of the bolt holes for the main caps. And I'll be doing that with a used head bolt that I'm not going to put in the new engine. So the head bolts on this engine are actually the same thread pitch as the main bolts. So I just took a grinder and made a little notch in there. And when I screw that in, it's gonna pull out any dirt or grime or material that's in the bolt holes. Now, the reason why that's important is because there's a bunch of stuff in the bolt holes. When you go to torque it, you're not gonna get an accurate value. So we have to make sure those are clean as well. And then we can start installing all the bottom end parts. I also put a little note here for myself to not forget the oil squirters. They are way down there in the bore, as you can see, and it's something I would very easily forget. So as I said before, I've had this block back for a couple of weeks now, and I'm glad to finally be working on it. I want this 80 series to be rock solid reliable, and the engine rebuild is definitely going to help in that department. Now, if you're new here, the engine wasn't blown. It just had a bad timing chain guide that shattered into a million pieces and the chain was rubbing on the metal backing. It's a huge effort to change that in the truck. So I pulled the entire engine out and here we are doing a rebuild because that's just the way things go and they tend to spiral out of control. The block is bored 20 over and the deck has been resurfaced. The crank has been polished. We have new pistons and rings. The rods were resized. And of course, we're going to be putting new rod and main bearings into this rebuild. I'm currently working on getting the block completely clean before I start assembling it as there may be some machine residue left over amongst other things. And we don't want any of that getting on or in our new parts. Alright, I've been cleaning the engine block for so long that it's dark outside now. I have the main caps in my ultrasonic cleaner. I just got this thing and it works really well. I'm using a cleaner that won't harm the metal, by the way. Um, and you can see how clean it got these, these bolts over here. Like, man, these things are looking great. Did the same thing for the oil squirters and the, uh, the bolts that go with those. So really satisfied with that thing. If you guys don't have one of those ultrasonic cleaners, you got to pick one up. It works really well. Um, check out all the dirt we've already taken off of these main caps. Well, not dirt. There's no dirt in the engine, but all the buildup in the grime. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get the oil squirters installed now as I'm waiting for those main caps to be done. And then we'll get the bearings in. 
um, do one final clean, get the bearings in, and get the crank installed. The oil squirters are a nice addition to this engine and they are torqued at 18 foot pounds. And basically what they do is they just direct or squirt oil onto the bottom of the piston. Not all engines come with these, but they did come stock in the 1FZ out of this Land Cruiser. At this point, I'm getting everything situated and ready for install, prepping the surfaces, getting the crank journals absolutely clean and installing the upper bearings, thrust washers, checking clearances, and finally installing the crankshaft. This is a very thorough and very deliberate process, and it's going to make sure everything is correctly installed and in proper spec. With the crankshaft installed, I can now check the bearing clearances to make sure that they're in spec. Now the machine shop told me that these clearances would be exactly where they were before, and I trust them, but it's always good to check anyway. Plastic gauge isn't the most accurate way of measuring your bearing clearance, so we're probably off by a little bit here with this measurement, but we can see that we're at about 2000s, which is exactly where we were before and exactly where we want to be now.
All right guys, the crankshaft is installed and everything went really smooth with that install. Our bearing clearances are perfect for both the mains and the thrust. We have two thousands for the main bearings and three thousands for the thrust clearance. The factory calls for 1.7 thou to 2.4 thou for the main bearing, so we're right in the middle of that range there. And for the thrust, it's actually a really wide range at just under one thou all the way up to 8.7 thou. So being at three, for that is also a very good place to be. So as you guys can see, we have really smooth operation of the crank here. There's no snagging or binding or any hard, tough spots to work through as I'm rotating this crank right here. So as far as the crank goes, we are done. Now we can move on to the pistons and the rods. As you can see here, I already have the expander ring and the oil rings installed on this piston and they tested out good uh, with the clearances in the manual right here. But I have to do the same thing for the compression rings and the oil and expander rings on all other five pistons and then get those installed. So that's what we're gonna do now. To check the ring gap, I'm using a piston to push these rings down into the bore. I did set them deeper and measured multiple times, even if it's not shown in the video. Ultimately, the oil rails and the top ring were in spec, but the second ring was a little too tight at 16 thousandths. The service manual calls for about 18 thousandths to 26 thousandths, so we're going to have to file this ring. This is a simple ring filing tool that I bought from Amazon for about $30 and it seems to actually do a pretty good job. I'm removing only a tiny bit at a time since I can't put material back if I remove too much. And after filing the ring, I ended up with a little over 18 thousandths of clearance, which I was good with. Here I'm installing the first and second piston rings and the rings typically have markings, dots, or some kind of indicator on them and those will go up. With the rings installed, I can now install the piston into the cylinder. This is my first time using a tapered compressor like this. I've used those kind of thin metal ones that tighten onto the piston in the past. So I'm going really slow since this is new to me and I'm trying not to damage the rings. Now it's time to do the exact same thing for the other five pistons. Check the ring gaps, get the piston rings installed, clock the rings, install the piston into the cylinder, check the bearing clearances, and then finally tighten down the rod caps to complete this short block assembly. As I'm sitting here editing the video, I realized that I lost some footage where I was explaining the current status of the motor. Basically, this is as far as we're getting because I'm waiting on a bunch of parts from Toyota, including the freeze plugs or the core plugs. 
the oil pickup tube gasket, dowel pins, and a bunch of other things, not to mention the front oil galley plugs that the machine shop removed, and Toyota doesn't make them anymore. I'm probably going to have to go with Dorman replacements for those. Oh, and I don't have my cylinder head back yet. So the next time you see this motor, the oil pans, timing cover, the freeze plugs, and everything else with the bottom end will probably all be installed. We have a lot of things in the pipeline coming very soon for this Land Cruiser build. To my right, I'm looking at a full set of Icon Rebound Pro wheels and a three and a half inch Dobbinson's lift kit. I did not expect to go that hard with the suspension on the Land Cruiser. I was gonna keep it pretty basic, but they were having a really good sale on Black Friday and I, I just couldn't resist. So this kit comes with the big body IMS shock, so we're gonna have a really good system under that Land Cruiser once we get that installed. I also have some interior upgrades planned. I have a trail gear low range kit for the transfer case. I have to tear apart the transmission and reseal that. And I still have to finish the motor since we only finished half of it today, since we're still waiting on the cylinder head and a bunch of parts from Toyota. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you liked this video, found it helpful, or you just enjoy this kind of content, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when I post new videos, leave a comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later. Here we go, at the top of the class on the road. And it's time to run it up, yeah you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor.